Hi everybody, this is Oleg. Welcome to Organ Preparedness. And here I go again. I want to talk about nuclear holocaust. Something that I don't ever want to happen. None of us do. But something we also should be ready for. Because if Third World War strikes. Nuclear exchange is inevitable, in my opinion. And I hope I'm, I hope I'm wrong. There is just so much, uh, so much nuclear weaponry out there. You know, United States and Russia, of course, being with the most. But then there's other countries, you know. North Korea. Not a good country that has them, you know, and Israel has a little bit, and France, and I'm not sure who else. I think India and China has a little bit. Anyway, <clears throat> bottom line is, it can happen, and probably will. And as I was talking yesterday with a couple of my subscribers, um, we were talking about being ready and having our bug out bags ready. I just couldn't help to think more about it as this world is not getting any better, you know. You just don't know when somebody might just press that button and there's no, that's the point of the return. Wants to press the button, once the missiles on their way, can't stop them. Unless you intercept them somehow, but even all this, all these anti-missile systems, they're not 100% guarantee. You know, they'll probably, they will probably be able to hit some of them, but they, they're not 100% proof. So we need to be ready for that too, you know. <clears throat> If you live in a big city, especially, if you live in a big city, you definitely need to move out, if not from that city, at least to the outskirts of the city. Because if that ever happens, bombs, they're not going to just drop them on the suburbs. They're going to hit places like ports or drop a bomb over airport or, or at least downtown. So, in my opinion, if you live in a big city, try to live far enough, in my opinion, at least 10 miles away from downtown, from airport and or port. And 10 miles really is not enough because if nuclear bomb will ever be detonated in your city or over your city, the whole city will be in chaos and panic and streets are going to get clogged up with cars in no time. Ideally, in my opinion, you should live on the very outskirts of the city, kind of near freeway where you have easy access to the freeway. So if that, if that ever happens and you happen to be home because, you know, you don't know even when it can happen. You might be at work. That's why you have to have your bug out bag with you in your car or preferably even inside your place of work because you know what if you cannot get to your car for whatever reason so at least you have some things on you some you know food supply for two three days and water and uh, some basic tools you know knife and wire cutters bolt cutters i mean and maybe both wire and bolt cutters so um, you need to you need to move if you can to the outskirts of the city. If you can, of course, not everybody can do that because we are all tied to the jobs because bills they keep coming. You know, I know firsthand. You know, you cannot just pick up and move into some small town because you need to <clears throat> maintain your standards of living and so so on. So um, do what you can to get away from airport, from port, from downtown of any major city 
you know, like LA, Seattle, Houston, New York. And in my opinion, and I could be wrong, 10, 12 miles away is just bare minimum, bare. If you're 10 miles away from, from detonation, you will survive. You will survive the attack. But problem is, very small chance you will be able to get away from there quickly. Because there's going to be a lot of people trying to do the same thing. So, that's why ideally you want to be on the outskirts of the city. Of course, if you live if, if you live in, on the outskirts or outside of the city, you need to commute to work. And let's say you work in downtown. Oh, that's the price you pay for possible extra safety. Nothing is guaranteed. It may happen while you're at work and then you're gone. But, you know, us as preppers, whatever we prepare for doesn't guarantee anything. But it increases our chances of survivability. You know, no matter how much you prep, uh, just somebody could just shoot you by mistake on the street. Oh, and all your preps are for nothing. Somebody else will use them. However, the more we prep for more events, the more chances we have for survival. And, of course, same goes if you live near power nuclear plant. I thought, and I was wrong, that there is no nuclear power plant in Northwest, in Pacific Northwest. And pretty much there aren't any, but there's none in Oregon, none in Idaho as far as I know. And there's only one or two in California, none in Nevada. Turns out to be there's one in Kennewick, Washington. It is quite far away from here. It is, you know, I'm not sure off the top of my head, it's in Eastern Oregon, Eastern Washington, sorry. And um, I was just talking about it with uh, one of my subscribers yesterday, by the way, he's also a YouTuber, check out his channel. Excellent material, he has a wide array of things that he covers. The channel is New York Prepper. I highly recommend this channel. So I watch every, pretty much every, every one of his videos. I haven't caught up with all of his videos that he's produced, but every new one that comes out, I watch. Excellent material, you know, he puts a lot of efforts in it. Anyway, um, so what I'm trying to say, we were talking about nuclear power plants and he mentioned that nuclear power plants, the one in Kennewick, Washington is functioning one. Supposedly only one reactor, which is better than three or four or five. So, uh, that is potential for disaster, of course. Luckily, it's at least a couple hundred miles away, probably more than that. I'd say probably 250 from where I am at, you know, in Portland, Oregon. And uh, hopefully the wind would not bring any fallout from there to here. And me being from Ukraine, as I mentioned before in my videos, I clearly remember accident we had in Chernobyl station back in 1986. I was 15 years old back then, but I remember well. I remember everything I've seen on TV, everything I heard. And Chernobyl station was, I'm from Kharkov, Ukraine. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, was something like 430 or 450 kilometers away from my city, which is about 250 miles, give or take. You know, one mile equals 1.6 kilometers. So you can figure that quickly. But uh, approximately the distance from Kennewick to here is the same distance as Chernobyl was from where, I, where I'm from. And to this, of course, there was some small radiation fallout but I would think uh, small enough dose because I st I'm still in touch with my family with 
some of my friends from there, school friends, you know, even though it's been 30 years, I'm still in touch with them. And um, people are still alive, you know, all my friends, all my family are still alive, no one's sick with cancer or anything. So that gives me hope and gives me idea that if you are far away, if you are two to 250 miles away from nuclear power plant, power plant that can melt down, or if a bomb get drops down on one of those, then then you have double trouble. Or if you are just a couple hundred miles away from nuclear blast, then you're probably safe. In my opinion, get away even farther if you can. But you're probably safe if you're if you're being that far away. So I'm gonna conclude this video. Um, I thank you everybody for watching. Please like and share. Please subscribe if you haven't when you subscribe please push that bell button right next to subscribe button that way you don't miss any material and if you enjoy these kind of topics you know i i try to cover a wide variety of topics you know everything shgf related uh, but nuclear war is definitely somewhere on the top of the list because it has high probability. I hope it'll never happen, or at least not in the near future. But it can happen, and we need to be ready for it as well. So have your bug out bag in your car, in your office, at home, in the closet by the exit door. So you can just grab it and go. At least you have some supplies for the next couple of days, two, three days, four days, whatever you can cram in there. Okay, take care everybody, and we'll see you in the next upload. Bye-bye.